talking with one of our regular guests. Jack Manley is a global market strategist with J.P. Morgan Asset Management, and he joins us to kick off this morning's coverage. What do you think? Are we going to see a ninth day of gains here for the S&P 500? You know, John, there is a whole lot of momentum in this market right now, and so it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if we see another day of gains. I don't want to say there's a whole lot of good news out there, but I do think that the move lower in interest rates that we've seen recently is somewhat sustainable. Uh, it's a reflection of Treasury announcing fairly recently that their demand uh, for issuing more debt has actually declined relative to earlier expectations. It's also a reflection of some of that economic data that you were talking about just a few moments ago, a somewhat disappointing labor report, falling energy prices, which should lead to renewed disinflation. These are two things that the Federal Reserve is going to be paying very close attention to and increases the probability uh, that the worst is certainly behind us uh, from a rate hiking perspective. All of that is generally supportive of, of risk assets. Yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like we still have some of the same issues that we're navigating, but when there's sort of a more definitive view on perhaps where interest rate policy goes, that gives the uh, the market a little bit of confidence. I guess just because we've picked a lane on where we think interest rates are going, how confident can we feel in that lane? Not particularly confident, John. I mean, I, I get really nervous when I hear that uh, there is almost no chance of a rate hike in December. I, I think it's important to remind everyone that from the beginning of this rate hiking cycle early last year, the Fed has done everything that it has promised to do and more. It has not once under delivered. And the most recent dot plot released in September told us one more 25 basis point hike. And Powell very clearly left the door open for that additional 25 basis point hike uh, at the beginning of this month. Do we need it? I don't think so. But just because the Fed shouldn't do something doesn't mean that it won't do something. That is something that we have learned uh, very clearly and very painfully over the last couple of years. But John, I, I think honestly, that may be a, a sort of a, a bringing attention to something that doesn't re require a, as much attention. Because the bigger picture here, uh, I would say, is that even if the Fed hikes two more times this year, right, which is certainly not our base case, but hey, anything can happen. Uh, there is this very clear clear signal, again, from the dot plot, from its summary of economic projections, that the Fed does not intend to keep rates where, it, where they are right now forever. We are still looking for cuts next year, still looking for cuts the year after. And if for some reason a recession materializes, that cutting cycle is going to become a whole lot more aggressive. So not a lot of clarity over the next two, three months. I'm not going to pretend like I have a crystal ball that can see out even that far, uh, but a decent amount of clarity just from Fed speak over the next few years. That gives me some confidence in where equities are trading right now. The other reason I, I just wanted to highlight the actual percentage increase in the S&P 500, you know, everybody's sort of talking about eight-day rally, but the fact that there's six and a half percent in gain right there, you always hear a lot of people say, if you miss those best days of the year, that can soil your overall performance. And we have a lot of people who highlight the uncertainty. They say, be cautious right now. Um, but I guess this is the challenge of investing, right? You know, if you, if you sort of move here, then you might miss out somewhere else. Uh, it's just very difficult to time the market. I, I think that's exactly right, John, and we are certainly not market timers. But again, I think it's important to remind everyone, you know, if, if we were having this conversation at the beginning of this year instead of at the end of it, think of all of the things that we were so absolutely certain would happen over the course of 2023. So many people were convinced that we would be in a recession right now. So many people were convinced that as a result of that recession, interest rates would be moving lower, that the Fed would be cutting. So many people were convinced that value stocks would find finally have their day in the sun, outperform growth. None of that has happened. So just because you are anxious, apprehensive, worried about current conditions, and there is plenty of stuff to be worried about, doesn't mean you should try to time this market tactically buy and sell. If you'd done that at the beginning of this year, based off of that outlook, you would have lost out on an enormous opportunity, an enormous gain. I think it's important to remember that. It's not that, re it's not that far in the past, John. Uh, it's still very much a relevant lesson. And just to final question on the fixed income market, which has been so complicated, and a lot of people have sort of put up their hand and said, this is what I like, or I like this, um, but it's been so volatile, and not, I think, the volatility that a lot of people enjoy when they're investing in an area where they're looking for some safety. How do you feel about fixed income investments from here? 
So here's here's what's cool about fixed income right now, John, is that uh, while there is a lot of uncertainty in terms of the immediate direction of interest rates, you are for the most part getting paid to wait because of that coupon cushion that has built up over the last couple of years. Uh, I would never advocate that any investor go all the way out on the curve by 30-year debt, for example. Uh, their risk-reward profile there is really out of whack. But I would say that if you had bought five-year debt at the start of the year, you actually made a little bit of money in 2023, despite all of the volatility that we've seen in interest rates over this time period. I'm okay with being a little bit early to that intermediate duration, higher quality play, something akin to the Bloomberg U.S. aggregate or a little bit uh, uh, lower, uh, at least in terms of duration, and waiting out the storm. Because I know that when the Fed starts to cut rates, and it is not an if, it is a when, when the Fed starts to cut rates, not only am I clipping that coupon, I get the price return story there as well. Fixed income, I think, still makes a lot of sense. Jack